Hello, welcome. Thank you for joining me once again today. I do appreciate your company. Today I'd like to talk to you about the subject of close encounters. Now, to many people that means many different things. There are many different situations in life where we have close encounters. And I've had many of those in my life in different situations in different places at different times and sometimes they just involve a people sometimes they might involve accidents or, or, or some event something happening and and sometimes people uh, I guess think that uh, things happen uh, because of the the paranormal the spiritual world or different things uh, close encounters with those things close encounters with death and many things associated with that. So today I'll look at the topic of close encounters and what the Bible says about those close encounters and what people learn from those close encounters. It always amazes me when I read survival stories. And you read uh, survival stories at sea where people survive for months just drifting around the ocean. Or you read survival stories where people are lost in the snow or in the forest or in the mountains and somehow miraculously they manage to survive. We've heard of children walking off into the forests and the jungles and, and surviving for long periods of time. We've, we've heard of all kinds of miraculous things. People being stuck in caves um, because of floods and, and, and miraculously still surviving, being able to find high ground. All these close encounters with nature, I guess you would, you would call them in some way, and people manage to survive. But quite often, miraculously, those people don't give any credit to God. But I'm sure, I'm absolutely sure, and I've spoken to some of those people in my lifetime, when they're in that lost place, when they're by themselves, they're seeking God. Much to do, I guess, in all that time you would spend alone. Much to think about in all that time you'd spend alone. But people dismiss the fact that God allowed them to survive, their miraculous survival. Some put it down to their own human strength. Others might put it down to, I don't know, just basic knowledge of how to survive and whatever. But at the end of the day, very few give credit to God. And isn't it interesting, if you look at life, and I, and I often do sit down and just reflect about life, most people in the world today spend more time denying God than they do actually looking for Him or studying His Word. They wouldn't have a clue what's in this book other than what someone's told them, or they've just opened a the Bible in the middle of summer and started reading. You know, th that really doesn't achieve anything. Um, if anything, that'll probably get you very mixed up. Okay, If you're going to, to look for God and you're going to study God, you either start at the beginning of the Bible, which is in Genesis, where it's all about the creation, or you come to the New Testament, which is about Christ and our salvation and the way we come to God today. There are two ways to do it. And, you know, I guess those intellectual type people want to go to, to the genesis of everything and find out how it all began and then debate that. And Go ahead and do that if, if you feel you need to do that. For those of you who are seeking a more spiritual experience, start in the New Testament because Christ is, has come to earth. Um, he, he's left the heavenly realm. He's come to earth. And you'll get a greater experience by starting in the book of Matthew and reading through that, or the book of John, wherever you want to start, really. But if you just open up this Bible and read a bit here, then close it up and read a bit there, and close a bit there and read up, you don't know anything. That's the truth of the matter. I'm sorry, but you don't. And then people, like I said, spend more time denying God than they actually spend searching for God through this book. And then those sort of people go, oh, I had a close encounter with Christianity. No, you didn't. You had a close encounter with your curiosity. That's what you had. It's a different kind of sea, isn't it? Your curiosity is not Christianity. So I often hear people say when they've been to some of these charismatic churches and apostolic churches and all this kind of stuff, and I've had a close encounter with God. I've had an experience with God. No, you haven't. No, you haven't. You've just been curious. Because if you were close to God and you have a close encounter with God, you'd still be there. You wouldn't be somewhere else. You wouldn't be seeking something else. You wouldn't be seeking some other faith. You wouldn't be seeking some other thing for satisfaction. You'd know where it comes from. So don't ever tell me you had a close encounter with God and, and walked away because that's not true. We do read in the Bible of people who are witnessed to, and I'll get into that a little bit later, who say, oh, 
they almost persuade us me the close encounter with God but that particular person never came to God they were just listening to somebody speak about God and you know what lots of people sometimes do listen to people speak about God but then they judge the man rather than the book and that's what you've not got to do don't look at me okay <laughs> hair teeth getting old don't look at me read the book that's what's important close encounters of the accident kind well I guess um, many of us who drive have had those uh, you live in the city, you go on a weekly basis, close encounters, people, or truck drivers, you know. Look, close encounters of all kinds. I, I had a, a very close encounter uh, many, many years ago when I was a young man, and I was driving down the freeway, and, uh, you know, cars are whizzing past me. And I try to stay around the speed limit. That's, that's what I like to do. I don't like to be one of those zooming down the road. You never know what's going to happen. And anyway, I'm in the left lane and all these people are passing me in the right lane. There's a, a line of us cars. And, and you know, we, we got three or four kilometres down the highway and then everything just started to stop. And about half a dozen cars in front of me, there was a bridge and somebody had jumped off the bridge. And, you know, I'm just grateful that I, I wasn't the person up the front. Okay, I was just grateful that I was happy to sit in that left-hand lane and, you know, be a few cars behind those things. Close encounters. I had close encounters one night when I was working for a, a man and uh, I had to, uh, no ca car at the time, didn't have a car. I only had one car in our family. My wife had young children and she had the car. And uh, I was asked to do a job. And this job I didn't finish till 11 o'clock at night. It was a big, big editing job that had to be done for the next day. And, and I finished at 11 o'clock at night and I had to walk down to the train station. I got down to the train station and I sat there and there was nobody there. The, the train was half an hour away on the timetable. And then a group of thugs came down. And they, they, they were going to finish me off. But miraculously, a man came along who was incredibly tall, incredibly strong. And these thugs went away. A close encounter. Or was that God's providence for protection? You see, I believe that God protects his own. He always does. And the amount of time we spend with God brings us closer to God. That's a close encounter. Yes. All the other things are close encounters. I remember um, when I was working for the media, um, I wanted a, a special media pass so that I could be close to the Queen when she came to Australia because my father was uh, working uh, for Buckingham Palace. He was a Queen's Guard uh, when we lived in England. And I thought it would be really nice to, to be close to the Queen and maybe I could even talk to her and ask her a question or shake her hand or do something. So <clears throat> my wife and I um, went down. I had the media pass. My wife didn't have the media pass. I went into the, the, the media area and my wife just walked down the, the side of the media area. <clears throat> and we waited patiently for the Queen to, to walk through and sure enough she came. But we were three or four metres away from the Queen. But my wife, who didn't have a media pass, was right next to the Queen. Close encounter uh, with Her Royal Highness said. So there you go. And, and that was a very special moment in uh, the life of my wife. She'd always wanted to be close to the Queen and, and see the Queen in person and be next to her. And, and there she was. And I thought for everything with my media past that I would be closer, but no, my life was closer. And I've always cherished the day. I thought that was really nice for her, that she could be uh, next to Her Majesty. Look, close encounters with people, um, there are all kinds of things, and we've had those in our life. I remember walking once in, in, in London, um, I think on my second trip to London, I was walking down the streets in London, and, and you know, there's millions of people in London, and, and there's loads of streets in London, little streets, and from across the street somebody yells out, Marty! I'm like, what? Who's this? Who's this? <laughs> <laughs> it was somebody from my neighbourhood who recognised me, you know. Anyway, these, these are, are, are close encounters of the nice kind and then I guess there are close encounters of other kinds where it might be uh, dangerous things. Um, I do recall uh, once my cousin um, ringing from England and saying that she had just, uh, by one train, missed, missed a bombing. Um, and that's a close encounter that you would never forget. It would mark you for the rest of your life, um, those sort of close encounters. And a lot of people have um, a survival conflict in their mind from those sort of things. So, you know, did, you know, wh why was I spared? 
There's a great movie if ever you want to watch it. Well, it's not a movie, it's a documentary uh, about 9-11. It's called In My Seat. And it's about a pilot who was um, meant to fly in one of those planes that crashed into the towers on that day. But the very last minute he was uh, not given the job. Someone else got the job who was a more senior pilot than him. And uh, that's the way it works in, in the aviation industry. Now, folks, close encounters. There are many, many types of close encounters. But today I'll talk about close encounters with the Lord and close encounters that you can probably reflect upon in your life because I'm sure you've had lots as well. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we thank you. We thank you for your love to us. We thank you for your protection, Lord. We thank you that during those close encounters you have spared us, Father, from what could have been a turmoil, a grief, a calamity, a catastrophe, and even death, Father. We thank you for your mercy and your grace. We thank you for your Son who came here that we could have a home in heaven, that we wouldn't fear of those close encounters, that we would be able to overcome those thoughts, those fears. Father, I praise you and I love you and I pray today that as we open the oracles of God, the divine library, people would understand that you are nearby all the time, right next to them, because you have said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. Father, we praise you in the wonderful name of Christ our Saviour. Amen. The idea of close encounters just <laughs> conjures up a lot of thoughts in people's minds straight away, doesn't it? And uh, I remember as a, a young man who was not even a teenager, um, immigrating to the country here in Australia, and uh, we flew out of England on an aeroplane, and our first stop was in Kuwait. Now, Kuwait is an oil-rich country, and many of the aircraft go there to land to fill up with, I guess, cheap aviation uh, fuel. So we landed there. And look out the window, and the first thing I see as a young man is men standing with automatic uh, guns and machine guns and things like that around the airport. And uh, I remember saying to my father, I said, what's this? I'd never seen this before. As a young man in London, the only thing I ever saw were buses and taxis and lots of people and shops. And suddenly we land in this place and there's all these men with guns. You know, what, what's this? This is the, my first close encounter with guns. And uh, anyway, my father said, you know, that this, this country has a lot of problems. So therefore the men have to arm themselves because there are others with arms. So I thought that's a pretty good explanation, but that's a close encounter with, with guns and also living in America for a, a space of time. You, everybody has, well everybody seems to have one. Anyway, I said to you earlier on that I was going to talk about um, uh, Festus and um, King Agrippa and Paul and how Paul was, was brought before King Agrippa and he, he witnesses to him, and this is King Agrippa and Festus, this is their close encounter with God, and let's see the result, what happens here. We'll turn to the book of Acts, chapter 26, and uh, we'll read from verse 24. And as he thus spake for himself, this is Paul speaking here, of course, he's brought before them, Festus said with a loud voice, Paul, thou art beside thyself. Much learning doth make thee mad. <laughs> I know uh, lots of people that learning does drive them mad. <laughs> Probably me one of them. If you can't remember things and you get to the test and you go, ah, look. Um, but Festus here didn't want to hear the word of God. He, he was getting the closest encounter he would ever have with the word of God. But he didn't want to hear it. He said, are you mad? He didn't even let him finish. <laughs> Let's read on. Verse 25, but he, that's Paul, said, I am not mad, most noble Festus, but speak forth the words of truth and soberness. I like the fact that he said truth and soberness. Did you hear the word soberness? It just makes a mockery of, of men and women. Oof. Verse 26, for the king knoweth of these things before whom also I speak freely. This is to King Agrippa. For I am persuaded that none of these things are hidden from him, for this thing was not done in a corner. 
The gospel is not done in a corner, folks. It, it, it's out there for everybody. And like I said, most people in the world today spend more time denying it than they do actually looking at it and trying to find out, is it real or not? Isn't that amazing? Anyway, let's move on. Uh, verse 27. King Agrippa, this is Paul speaking, Believest thou the prophets? I know that thou believest. You see, King Agrippa was well versed in the prophets. He was brought up. Uh, this is happening in Judea, where we're talking about now. He was brought up understanding um, the the laws the, of, of, of the uh, Jewish people. He understood the prophets. He knew, I guess, quite a bit about the Bible because Paul says, "Hey, you know about these things." But still. Close in county, not listening. Move on. Then, verse 28, Then Agrippa said unto Paul, Almost thou persuadest me to be a Christian. Almost thou persuadest me to be a Christian. Almost. Why almost? What was wrong with this close encounter that he had with Paul? What was... What was it that Paul said that he goes, oh, I don't want to hear this? What was it? What was the denial there? Was it pride? Was it maybe because Festus said you're mad? And the king didn't want to acknowledge that he was listening to a madman? You know, that happens a lot in, in uh, society today when we, we go out and we talk to people about the Lord Jesus Christ. There'll be one in the pack who goes, oh, they're all mad. Don't listen to them. Same thing happened here, didn't it? You see, the precursor to Agrippa going, now almost persuade us, was Festus going, he's mad, he's mad, he's mad. And what happens when you've got a group of people, there's someone in there all go, they're mad, don't listen to them. Exactly the same thing. There was your close encounter and you missed it because some person in there didn't want you to know about it. Interesting, isn't it? Verse 29. And Paul said, I would to God that not only thou, but also... All that hear me this day were both almost and altogether such as I am, except these bonds. So Paul says, I want everybody here to know about Christ. I want everybody here to be like me, to understand it. The only thing I don't want is people to be like me in bonds. I want them to be free. A noble thing to say. And what did he say to Festus when Festus said, you're mad, you're mad, you're mad? He said, most noble Festus, no, I'm not mad. I just want to tell you the truth. And you know, today, whenever you hear a Christian being interviewed, 99% <clears throat> of the time, the interviewer has got a, something in the back of their mind. They just want to bring this person into a corner and capture them and, and, and somehow destroy what they've got to say. Why? Because they don't know the truth. Because they've opened the book in the middle and gone, No! What's this? Yeah, that's what happens. You know, when's the last time you read a book? I don't know if you ever read a book or an e-book or whatever. Start in the middle and see how, how far you get. You, you mess it up. You won't have a clue what the plot to the story is. And the Bible's no different. If you just pick random spots and open the Bible up, like a lot of people do, you get very, 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 very confused. And then you say, I've had a close encounter with God. You know, I uh, guess there are uh, hundreds and hundreds of videos out there um, of people who say that um, they have uh, seen God, seen heaven. The Bible says you can't, okay? But they might have had a vision. Visions are possible, yes. It's possible. But the Bible says no one's seen God, so even in the vision, if you had a vision of God, you, you wouldn't be seeing God. You would only be seeing the great light. You would not be seeing any more. And it would only be a vision. It wouldn't be the truth. It would be what God allows you to see. And I say this, and I say this with great respect, that dead men don't speak. Okay? When people say, I've come back from the dead. No, well, no, you haven't. You might have been clinically dead, but you weren't dead because you came back and you spoke. It doesn't work that way. I once worked for a man who, who said that very thing. Oh, there's nothing there. But I said, no, you, you weren't dead. To, you came back and you're speaking to me. <clears throat> this is the way it is, folks. Dead people don't speak. You, do, you, you can have a vision of things, that's granted. 
But even then, you know, what happens there is you've got all these wacky people out there who've got visions of everything. That's how some of these false religions started because I've had a vision of something, you know. I've had a vision of a gold thing or something. Yeah, you know, come on, give me a break. Give me a break. The book was closed. Don't believe any of that stuff. Anything that has been done after this book was closed is going to be false religion. It, yeah, religion. And I say religion because you know, if you have a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ and he's your saviour, then you're not religious. You're a believer. Religion is man-made ordinances, sacrifices, sacraments, and all the other things that they want to do. But the Bible says, no, Jesus solved it once and for all upon the cross, okay? Come to him and your sins are forgiven once and for all. You don't have to keep doing your sins, okay? It's not a close encounter with Jesus, um, and, and then you, you keep coming for that close encounter all the time. You're with him all the time. If you really want a close relationship, you're not having a close encounter, then away, a close encounter, away. You stay with him as best as you possibly ever can. And I know some Christians uh, go away and, 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 you know, and they might be truly saved. I'm not the judge of salvation. God is. But, you know, chances are if you tell people you've had a close encounter with God and then you walked away from God, you didn't. You just had a brain fade. <laughs> That's all you had. I'm sorry. Anyway. I've got more verses to read to you, so let's move on. Turn now with me to the book of Hebrews, chapter 13, and uh, we'll start in verse 1. It says this, Let brotherly love continue. Be uh, united, Christians, in your brotherly love and your sisterly love. Be united as much as possible. Verse 2, Be not forgetful to entertain strangers. You know, a lot of close encounters with people who don't know the faith. It's always good to try and um, be with people and, 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 I guess, you know, try and explain the gospel to them. But don't spend too much time with them because they'll bring you down. Verse 2, be not forgetful to entertain strangers, for thereby some have entertained angels unawares. Many people today... Uh, I guess, misunderstand, misrepresent, or completely lie about angels. Angels definitely exist. The Bible speaks of angels all the time. As a matter of fact, the angel Gabriel is, is spoken of uh, in the story of Jesus. And many other angels are spoken about in the Bible. But there are good angels and there are bad angels. Because if you read the Bible and understand it, Satan... The devil was kicked out of heaven and a whole bunch of angels went with him. So there are dark angels and there are light angels. Now, you can have a close encounter with a dark angel. Um, that's very, very common, people. That's very common. Because dark angels are out there in this world. And dark angels can represent themselves as light, like they do in, in music, you know, heavy metal music and swearing and cursing in rap music. That's just awful. That's the dark devils enticing you. That's what that is. And it's not just in music, it's in movies, it's in everything. Dark angels, dark spirits, dark places that lead people to dark places, that lead people to hopelessness. And then sometimes they look like angels of light and they come into you and you think, oh yes, wow, 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 and then they destroy you. But the Bible says some have entertained angels unaware. You see, God has his angels all over this world, all over this world, all over this earth, as well as in heaven. God sends angels here with specific purposes. But let me remind you, Christians, that you have a privilege that's greater than the angels, and that's to witness the people. Because at this point, in this point in time, the angels are not permitted to witness. No, they're not. Many people refer to as guardian angels, someone who, who guards you. Well, absolutely. You can ask the Lord for protection through his angels. Many do. And so you rightly should. If you believe in God and you believe in him and you're close to him, then he will protect you. He will send angels to protect you. And he does. Some people say that an angel comes and 
takes you by the hand after you die to heaven if you're born again Bible believing Christian I don't know about other I can't really say neither can you <laughs> entertain angels I know that many times in my life God has had an angel to protect me as I told you about the train station I told you many times I've been threatened God has sent an angel to protect me many times my family have had problems and God has sent angels to protect us I know many missionaries who've been in dire situations and God has sent his angels to protect them in some cases he sent his angels to take them home it's both you've entertained angels unaware but be careful what kind of angels they are because dark angels will lead you into dark places very 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 dark places and dark people will lead you into dark places and they'll be close encounters that you do not want they won't be the nice kind of close encounters that you want with a guardian angel they'll be dreadful horrible traumatic like drugs and alcohol lead you into those dark angels will drag you down that path telling you it's wonderful you're having a great time when you're being destroyed the angels of God will protect you I know which close encounter I want let's look at some more verses just turn to the book now of Ephesians and we'll go to uh, chapter 6 verse 12 because it's in keeping with what I've just said to you about dark places. It says this, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Now turn to... The book of Colossians chapter 1 and we'll start in verse 12 it says this giving thanks unto the Father which have made us to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light light not darkness people in light okay walking in the light verse 13 who have delivered us from the power of darkness and have translated us into the kingdom of his dear son Jesus said I'm the light of the world he that follow me will not walk in darkness Close encounters with darkness will lead you to dark places. Close encounters with the Lord will lead you into light places. The Bible's clear about that. Verse 14. In whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. Okay, the forgiveness of sins once and for all. In verse 15. Who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature? It's talking about Jesus Christ. Okay, I'll read it again. It says this. Who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature? Verse 16, key verse, listen to this one. For by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth. You see, God created the heavens and the earth. The Bible tells us that in the beginning. If you want to go back to the beginning of the Bible, you will read that that's what it is. He created all things. And then it says here, the visible and the invisible. Now, close encounters can be of the invisible kind and can be of the visible kind. You know, for many years, uh, people spoke about the Bermuda Triangle and ships and planes disappearing and, and being lost and sinking and all those kind of things and the invisible and, 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 and the visible. You know, I guess when, when you look at the Bermuda Triangle and what we know, we don't even know much about it anyway. We do know that magnetic forces there cause compasses to uh, go crazy and all that sort of stuff and, and ships get lost and planes get lost because they run out of fuel or whatever and who knows but look hey invisible and invisible belong to God okay we don't know everything and we won't not this side of heaven it says whether they be thrones dominions or principalities or powers all things were created by him and for him God created all things for him now Let's talk about the aliens, the extraterrestrials, the aircrafts that fly around the skies, the lights you see, the other planets. Let's talk about all that kind of stuff. Close encounters, because, you know, the big movie about close encounters and aliens being our friends and, and whatever. 
We don't have any literal proof that God has created uh, life on other planets. He can if he chooses to. Um, so I'm not going to tell you that there's not. God could create anything he wants to. It, it, it's his creation to create as he chooses to create. So there could be. Absolutely there could be. But it could just be dark forces as well. It could just be those dark angels buzzing around the place. You see, angels can do what they want, can't they? They can walk through walls. They can maybe fly in things in the ocean. And Who knows? Dark forces? Who knows? They're not really things to, for us to worry about or for us to know. I don't believe in any alien nations going to come and invade us. I don't believe they're going to take us away and, and, and do things to us. I don't believe any of that kind of stuff, simply because if they were that smart that they could travel and do all those things, they wouldn't need us. <laughs> the last thing they would need is mankind. Goodness gracious, <laughs> could you imagine that? <laughs> if they have that much intelligence above us, they wouldn't be interested in what we do. They go, oh, keep them away. <laughs> Ah, uh, makes me laugh. It really does. Let's read on. And it says, verse 17, And he is before all things, and by him all things consist. God has made everything. And like I said, if he chooses to, to make uh, other aliens or other planets or other beings, then that's his choice. He has the freedom to do that. We do read in the Bible that uh, if you go to the last book of the Bible, of Revelation, you do read about the creatures in heaven, the visions that um, John had seen. You do uh, see in the Old the Testament uh, under Isaiah and Ezekiel and, and the prophets, you, you see these uh, creatures that uh, they had visions of, uh, heavenly creatures that God had made that are nothing like the creatures on earth. Okay? And look, we've all had close encounters with some kind of creature on earth, even if it's just a yappy little dog, or some have had encounters with sharks, and some have had close encounters with bears. A friend of mine <laughs> went to Russia on a trip and <laughs> had a close encounter with a big bear, but it was his own fault because he didn't take the bear spray with him and he was wandering off. Um, you see, there are close encounters with animals of all kinds, especially in the ocean. Um, we, we just There are creatures in the ocean that we've never seen, we don't even know about. Many, many years ago, um, when I was involved in music, um, a, a friend of mine played in a band, and um, the lady who was the singer in that band um, went swimming in Hawaii and was, was stung by something, and within a few days she was dead. No one ever knows what uh, that was. Uh, so there are, there are creatures in the ocean, uh, not just sharks and, and, and crocodiles and, and things like that up in Queensland here. There are creatures you'll have close encounters with. Um, you know, you, you can go to a zoo and you can have a very close encounter with a, a, a dangerous animal, but they are protected from you and you're protected from them. And then you, you, you see that and you see there's big bars and everything, but then you also see that there are certain people who, who've got private zoos and, 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 and uh, things and, and, and they pet these creatures. They pet tigers and... and and elephants and lions and, and all these kind of things. And there are people who, who run safaris where they're very friendly with the wild animals. Um, but our close encounter would be very different to their close encounters. Their close encounters are one of, of trust over years with these animals. And our close encounters would be those of fear. I know people who, who fear cats or fear dogs or, you know, something like that. It, it's just quite incredible, uh, the close encounters we can have. But God created all, all, all of those things, but he didn't create them to scare us, folks. That's not why he created them. He created them because he's divine, he's superior, he's all-knowing, uh, he's the everlasting God, and uh, he, he's, he's finite, and we're infinite. Uh, don't get that right. He's, <laughs> I mixed that one up, didn't I? He's infinite and we're finite. And that is the, the God of creation. And... If you really want to have a close encounter with God, you've got, to, you've got to come to God through his word. You've got to understand the Bible. Don't just pick it up and turn the page and go, oh, hang on a minute, this can't be right. It doesn't work like that, folks. You've got to come to God upon his terms. Does God accept you as you are? No. Say it again. He accepts you through Christ. 
That's why Christ came. There's no other way to come to God. There's no other name given under heaven by which men must be saved other than the name of Jesus Christ. The Bible's very clear about that. Okay, If you want to have a proper a proper relationship and not just a close encounter, one you run away from, like so many people do. You need to be drawing close to God, not just having a close encounter, but you need to stay close to God, close to the, close to the Lord, close to His Word, close to His Son, and close to His ways. That's the only way. There's no other way. Like I said in the beginning of this message, many people spend more time denying than actually spend studying the Word of God, to find out how to be close to Thee. If you've had a close encounter and gone away from the Lord, come back. There's nothing out there. I've been there. I can tell you there's nothing there. If you've had a close encounter with salvation and you've been this far away like King Agrippa was, or like Festus was, Festus was and said, you're mad, you're mad, you're mad, don't listen to people around you. Listen to what God says in his book. Come to him. Take the seven day challenge. Down on your knees for seven days. Ask God to reveal himself to you. Read the book. Start in John. Start in Matthew. Understand why Christ came. Don't listen to people who say you're mad. Lots of people say I'm mad. But you know what? I've got a peace that they don't have. I've got a comfort they don't have. I've got a hope that they don't have. And I want to pass that on to you today. I pray that you would understand that Jesus Christ is the Saviour. By coming to him, he offers you all those things. Throw away your close encounters and have a close relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. By coming to him and asking for forgiveness, repenting in sin. And you can be a child of the King. Lord bless. Bye for now.